how long to Sapporo? From here, it'll take approximately 12 hours under normal driving conditions, as well as a trip by ferry. No way! I thought we were closer than that. Guess we'll have to stop and snooze another night before we get there. Even after landing in Hokkaido, we still have a long drive ahead of us. Will you be alright, Mako-chan? Don't worry. I'll be able to power the whole way through. You rock, Makoto! I like that energy! <sighs> I have to admit, I'm kind of exhausted. All this time on the road is starting to get to me. This is the longest I've ever driven, so any amount of rest would help. That's true. We were in the camper all day. We definitely owe you a break. Sorry for asking too much of you, Mako-chan. I wish I could drive in your stead. <laughs> Don't you worry about me. Driving's a responsibility I enjoy. Plus, it's nice listening to everyone chatter away in the back. Keeps me alert and motivated. Then we will find a way to repay your devotion. Ryuji, massage your shoulders at once and procure the finest soft serve money can buy. On it! Wait, why does it have to be me? I'll massage you too before bed. I know this technique that works wonders on sore muscles. Us models use it all the time. That'd be great. I could use a good massage. Makoto, I need to apologize. What? Oh, why? Because I can't help you. Even though I know how effective physical stimulation is at treating fatigue, but I'm all digital, and therefore incapable of massaging. An AI that can't provide assistance cannot be humanity's companion. I'm as worthless as a bug. Uh, Sophia? Are you going through mood swings or something? True, she does pack quite the punch in battle. Wait, how is that even relevant? You've been a great deal of help so far. We owe you a lot, Sophia. You mean it? That makes me happy. And I do want to try this soft serve you speak of. Her mood swung right back to normal. Makoto, you look spent. I say we call it a day the moment we reach Hokkaido. In that case, we should treat ourselves to some local cuisine for dinner. Oh, I've always wanted to try wasabi soda. Uh, no thanks. Sure is vast, isn't it? Vast enough to call it huge, Kaido, by my reckoning. It's supposed to be a lot cooler up here, so hopefully that means no more stuffy, sleepless nights. You said it. There's nothing more hellish than sleeping in a hot, sweaty tent crammed with dudes. Hellish indeed. We're so overheated we nearly strip naked by morning time. I found it obscenely refreshing. Just make sure you keep the nudity inside the tent, please. Sapporo Central City, a bustling outpost of civilization, cradled by the untamed wilderness. Hey, you think they're still doing the snow festival? Are you seriously that dumb? Well, it certainly is cooler here than Tokyo. It should be a nice change of pace. I know we just got here, but I want to check whether there's a jail nearby. Sophia? I do smell a jail. An intense one. Just like Gramps said. That means whoever Zenkichi's looking into is the monarch of Sapporo. Then may I suggest we comb the area for intel? Uh, before that, I think we should hit the bath. Seriously, I've been feeling all gross since yesterday. Agreed. It would be nice to freshen up a little first. Then let me help. I've already located a bathing facility only 500 meters from here. Wow, Sophia. You work quick. Guess it's bath time for you guys, then. In the meantime, I'll be on the prowl for that intel. Don't worry, Mona-chan. I'll rinse you down as soon as we're done. But what No, no, I, I can clean myself just fine. It's just as the data says. Cats hate getting wet. Don't lump me in with those other fur balls. 
I demand you give your data a full rewrite! I'd like to try a bath. Would someone mind bringing this phone in? Uh, wouldn't the hot water, like, wreck it? Uh, along with you inside? I'm sure we can work out the details. Now, Sophia, will you guide us there? Chan will like these? I do. She'll say, thank you for the pretty flowers. If only heaven wasn't so far away, then maybe I could see her. Did something happen over there? They're leaving flowers. Maybe somebody passed away. Now that you mention it, I do recall there was an accident on the news. Something about a snow sculpture collapsing in Odori Park? It ended up taking a young girl's life. Maybe that was where it happened. I can only imagine the sorrow her family must be suffering. Yeah. What's wrong? Are we not taking a bath anymore? This is paradise. I'll say. The heat has crept into my bones. Yeah, that bath was pretty solid. We should go again when we're in town. Anyways, it's nice having a bath like this all to ourselves. Can't get that at home. What's more, we're in the middle of a long journey. We must take proper measures to recover our strength and stamina.
I refuse to leave right as the true test of fortitude begins. I shall remain until I'm ready to faint. The hell are you talking about? If you faint, that's on you, man. Man, this water feels great. Morgana really should have been here. Sophia might like it as well, though the incorporeal may pose a challenge. She really is a mystery, ain't she? What are your thoughts on her? That much is obvious, but didn't she say something about wanting to understand people's hearts? Ah, oh, the heart of mankind. Try as I may, I have yet to depict its full essence in my paintings. It hides both darkness and light, mingling beauty and atrocity in its depths. Try as you may to unravel it, its enigma grows deeper still. Not sure I can comment on that, but I do know Sophia gets along with all of us. It's me thinking she might not need to worry about all that hard stuff. Does she not endeavor to become humanity's companion? Perhaps she wishes to uncover the workings of the heart in order to achieve this. Uh, yeah, what you said. She seems pretty dead set on it, too. If that's what Sophia has decided, we should lend her our full support. She is our precious ally, after all. <laughs> True enough. She could use all the help she can get. Damn, heat's starting to get to me. Want to ditch the bath and grab some milk coffee? Whoa, that sounds good, too. Now I can't make up my mind. I protest. We are in Hokkaido, as you may recall. It would be a sin to forego its fresh dairy offerings for some artificial substitute. To appreciate it properly, we must partake right as it's squeezed from the other, the way farmers have done for millennia. Uh, yeah. Knock yourself out, man. All right. Body and mind refreshed. That bath was just what we needed. Thanks for suggesting this place, Sophia. No prob. Glad I could be of service. I noticed you guys were pretty quiet. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> you know. Huh? You have a phone call from Zenkichi. Greetings. You are now speaking to the long arm of a wolf. So, you guys in Sapporo yet? I was being facetious. You do know what that means, right? Anyway. I wanted to set up a meeting. How about I swing by the RV in the evening? Zenkiji's gonna meet us? Then let's go be ready for it. Now that we're all together, let's talk about the Monarch of Sapporo. Our suspect's name is Mariko Hyodo. Oh, and wait for it. She's the mayor of Sapporo Central. Our target's a mayor? No way! Wouldn't that make her the most influential person in Sapporo? How could someone like that be a monarch? This is true. Such things have happened before. How'd you find out she's the one? Because everybody's suddenly in love with her. Mayor Hyodo's approval rating now sits at a lofty 88%. She gained 50 points in the last two months alone. Did you say 50? So she got crazy popular out of nowhere? It's more than just crazy. It's unheard of. There's more. Last month, Three city councilmen who opposed her bill admitted to corruption and resigned. Any remaining councilmen who opposed her suddenly became her most fervent advocates. Not to mention the elections coming up. It's all too convenient. Rumor has it, Shoto wants to expand her political influence to the national level. PubSec's been investigating that. But, alas, we haven't run across any solid leads just yet. So, what do you make of all this? Bingo. And that's where you come in. It is suspicious, I will admit. But we'd need a keyword to confirm whether she's a monarch or not. That won't be a problem. 
She's already referenced Emma several times in her speeches, meaning there's a good chance she's been announcing her keyword in public. So you're saying we can find out her keyword if we go see her speak? Very likely, yes. In fact, Kyoto's gonna be in Suzushino on the 10th making a speech. Since it's close to the election, the crowds may well be in the thousands. That's a grip. If she is indeed changing people's hearts, then perhaps this is no surprise. <sighs> is something wrong, Haru? No, it's just... It's hard to explain. Mariko Hyodo. The name seems familiar somehow. I mean, she is the mayor of town. Maybe you've heard her name on TV. Possibly. Sorry, let's put that aside for now. Whatever you do, don't try and contact her directly. I'm saying this to keep you safe. It'll be a downright pain in the ass if she finds out we're onto her. I suggest you enjoy your leisure time until the day of the speech. Hey, should we tell him what happened with Ichinose-san? She's an important part of our investigation now. All right. You two have something you want to share? You made a deal with the inventor of Emma? Wait, hold on. That's Kuan Ichinose, you said? Where have I heard that before? Right, she was on my report. Ichinose's the one who wrote Emma from scratch. Were you looking into her? I was looking into Medis, actually. Wasn't long before her name popped up. The famous inventor who sold off Emma to Medis. Tell me, how'd you get cozy with someone like that? Oh, well, uh, I guess it just sort of happened. What matters is her familiarity with Emma. If anyone abuses it, she could help us find out who and why. Only Ichinose knows Emma's ins and outs, no matter what version it is. Makes sense. The report didn't make her out to be somebody dangerous. And while she does sound like a valuable source of info, I really want you guys to be more careful about this operation. I'm trusting you guys a lot by sharing all this classified intel. So I'd prefer you don't go creating liabilities like this behind my back. Understood. We'll take your advice to heart. Good. And besides, shouldn't I be your go-to guy for help? Seeing you guys run off making confidants left and right makes me feel like a lonely old man. Are you trying to gain our trust or get attention? Hate to say it, Gramps, but we do shit on our own because your help only gets us so far. What? It's not my fault I'm not an expert on all this cognitive mumbo-jumbo. And would it kill you to ditch the Gramps? I'm as fly as any one of you kids. Uh... Mm -hmm. At least say something! I don't need your pity. You're the one bringing it up. Never mind that. Point is, there's a speech on the 10th and I'm counting on you to be there. I wish there was something we could do until then. I'm not a fan of waiting. What else can we do but be prepared and keep ourselves in top condition? It's like Zenkichi said earlier. Let's enjoy our leisure time and make the most of our trip. Hey, uh, since we're in Hokkaido, we should chow down on seafood. I hear Hokkaido's soup curry is also not to be missed. I'd like to visit the former government office. Their flowers are supposed to be breathtaking. Okay, then I'll set a route that takes us to each of those destinations. Thanks, Sophia. The directions are all yours tomorrow. Check it out. It's actually pretty hip for such an old place. It was once the main office for the Hokkaido government. Now it remains a symbol of the island and an important cultural property. Simply marvelous. There's a stillness and symmetry here that ignites my artist's soul. And the garden is so lovely. How many kinds of flowers do you think there are? What's going on over there? This flower is completely wilted! How could you overlook this? Ma'am, I'm so sorry! It's just, this summer's been much hotter than last year! Spare me your excuses! 
This flower bed is one of the city's main points of attraction. Have you forgotten you work for the most powerful woman in Sapporo Central? Perhaps you won't be much longer. Please, no! I'll do anything to fix this! You can keep your eyes glued to these flowers around the clock for all I care. Just do not let this happen again! Then that's what I'll do, Mayor! Jeez, that's one scary lady. Oh, hold on. Did he just call her Mayor? Oh, are you all here for sightseeing? I'm sorry you had to witness such unprofessional behavior from our staff during your visit. Oh, no. Hmm. Could it be? Your Haru-chan? Huh? Of course you wouldn't recognize me. You were tiny the last time I saw you. It's me, Mariko Hyodo. Your father, President Okumura, was a very good friend of mine. Hyodo? She's the mayor? Oh, okay, guys, don't panic. Oh, could it be your Mari-san? Yes, yes. Oh, that lifts my heart. It's been ever so long. Uh, Haru, do you know this lady? Yes, of course I do. She used to come visit me back when I was little. Mari-san was one of my father's clients. They used to go golfing all the time. And she'd always keep me company whenever I was bored or lonely. Some freaking coincidence. Ooh, you got that right. Haru-chan, I'm so sorry about what happened to your father. Oh, no. Thank you for your concern. Well, if there's anything that's been troubling you, you know that I'm here for you with open arms. I appreciate you saying that, but I'm okay. I have good people managing my company, and I'm working hard to finish my degree. And while I'm grateful to be surrounded by such wonderful people, I still have to walk on my own two feet. Haru-chan, my, how you've grown. Mari-san, I'm not a little kid anymore. Oh. Please forgive me. It seems my emotions got the better of me. Now then, are you here visiting with your friends? I hope you're all enjoying Sapporo to the fullest. Rest assured, my staff is working hard to make Sapporo a beautiful and worthwhile destination for all. Don't just stare at the ground. Replace these hideous flowers at once! <laughs> I'm on it! Way they all start slacking off. Ah, I'm sorry you had to see that. Now, as much as I'd like to keep chatting, there are preparations to be done. This election has kept me busy night and day. But do let me know if there's any way I can help. <sighs> sorry to be so blunt, but she seems really two-faced. Mari-san... You used to be so kind to everyone. You think maybe she's not the monarch we're after? I don't know. We just saw her go apeshit on that guy. Normal people don't get pissed over plants. Are you okay, Haru? Yes, I'm fine. Just a little surprised is all. Oh, and sorry I didn't get her keyword. I was... preoccupied. Thanks for the concern, but I'm fine. I'm glad to hear that. And as far as the keyword goes, we still have that public speech. Makoto's right. Our chance will come. For today, let's go around asking for rumors on Hyodo and make that our objective. Yes. I'd like to find out what changed her. We're on it! 
morning, Mayor Hyoto. Mayor, that was incredible! Holy shit! It's like we stepped into a cult. Her popularity is unbelievable. Do you think everyone here had their hearts changed? Crowds have a tendency to attract people. I imagine some of them came of their own volition. Haru. <sighs> Look, Yodo has her phone out. She's gonna say it. Be ready. I'm sure you're all familiar with Emma, yes? I'm also no stranger to technology. So please feel free to add me. For those of you listening outside Sapporo, outside Hokkaido, or even outside the country, this invitation extends to each of you as well. The keyword is Snow City. Well, there you have it. The whole audience is friending her. Shouldn't we be stopping her right now? No. Causing a scene here would only draw unwanted attention. I hate to say it, but all we can do for now is watch. We can at least be glad we got the keyword. Now we can infiltrate Yoda's jail anytime we like. The smell here in Suzushino isn't too strong. Getting inside the jail won't be a problem. So the preparations have been made. Then let's go, everyone. If Mari-san really is the monarch, only we can stop her. We can't let her toy with the hearts of innocent people. True that. All right. Then let's ready up and begin infiltration. city encased in ice. Its serenity belies a yawning desolation. So cold. Why is it so cold in the summer? The fact that we can enter this jail means that Mari-san really is the monarch. Noir. It's okay. My main concern is returning everyone's desires. There's a building in the distance that looks like a castle. Should we go there? Yeah, that's where the desires gotta be. Okay. Then let's make investigating that castle our top priority. All right. Intruders, get them! Shadows, defeat them and move on. Let's go. Silky Jack Frost, you're mine. Strike. Yes, Noir, your defense is degree! 
sure. Noir, your defense is decreased. Huh. Yeah. Don't worry. Just beyond here. How far does this ice wall go? It doesn't seem like we can just break through it. This place is so cold and empty. It's chilling to think this is how someone sees the world. <sighs> it's over for me. Getting so sleepy. <sighs> Oracle has fainted. Come on, stop fooling around. There must be an alternate route somewhere. Huh. That way is also blocked off. And our only option is to follow this route. Let's take it as far as we can. Very well. We shall analyze our surroundings and find a proper solution. No! It's cold as balls out here! Let us start jogging and freeze in place. So says the jock. Hey, what else can I do? Every second we waste, that old hag gets another heart in the bag. Skull's right. We need to keep moving. Yes, let's explore the castle perimeter and figure out the secret to getting in. Shoot him up! You found a shadow. It looks strong. Show yourself! What do you think? Can you tell it off? Based on the past few jails, we should find something here that'll help us move forward. Nice! The gate's open! Don't you feel like something's off, though? Hmm. Not picking up any shadows on the radar. Even so, we shouldn't let our guard down. Anything could happen. so hard. Think we're finally getting the hang of this? So Joker, what'd you get? Is that Mariko Hyodo on there? Looks like a campaign flyer. Hmm. 
The snowstorm came out of nowhere. Did we trigger this somehow? It looks even worse than the area we just came from. It doesn't look like we can head that way anymore. Then our exit is lost. An ill omen, to be sure. Uh, guys? I don't want to freeze to death here. We need to run for shelter before we get completely snowed in. I can help with that. Oracle, set our destination over there. <laughs> What'd you find? Whatever it is, I'm going. No way. I'm gonna freeze to death. The snowstorm's friggin' insane. It's so thin out here. Any further exposure might put our health at risk. Uh, no way. You'd freeze to death in this cold. Hang in there, Oracle. <laughs> We're almost at our destination. Is this... a heater? It sure is big. We should be able to warm up here. The heck's a heater doing out here? Let's just press it and see what happens. Oh, oh so nice and warm. This really is perfect timing. You have frozen solid out here. Just the sight of it makes me feel more at ease. We truly are fortunate to have found this. You sound like my grandma, dude. I saw three other heaters, too. Do you want to go check those out? You mean you can see them from the tower? Huh. That's suspicious. Maybe there's a connection. Like, they were put there for a reason. Then let's switch on all three heaters. Let us make haste. The longer we linger at the fire, the harder it is to leave. Oh, wicked bearer of flames, whose heap of soothes and ensnares. We shall sever thy temptation at once. I think you might be overdoing it. Oh, look! The snowstorm stopped. Perhaps the heaters have stopped it for good. That must be why the enemies were guarded. Looks like they're pretty handy. Let's keep them in mind in case we run into any more snowy issues. Aww. Aww, what? Huh? Hmm. Huh? The ice wall's gone. No kidding. Wonder why. Something tells me even a massive heater could have done this. Hypothesis. In Shibuya and Senda, our key to progression both times was the core at the top of the prison key. If the same logic applies, then couldn't that core we found earlier be the key to melting these ice walls? It could very well be possible. Yeah, uh, not kidding. Remember, we're in the metaverse. Some things we just have to accept and move on. In this case, we'll need to melt more ice walls to get inside the castle. Then we know what we need to do. All right, Sophia. Ready or not? Here we come! Uh... Let's get going. There it is. The prison key. It's our second one. Let's do this. I'll take it. Something's there. Let's check it out. It looks like we can descend from here. Although there are shadows in the way. It's a steep slope covered with snow. The danger is there regardless. Hey, isn't that a snowboard over there? Why don't we use that to cruise down? Let's go. Huh. 
I'm not seeing any shadows at the moment. one staff member who let that flower with her? I wonder if it's related to what she said earlier, how she wanted to make Sapporo a beautiful destination for all. Well, I certainly understand her passion. Sacrificing her own people to do it is completely unacceptable. Yes, I agree. At any rate, we retrieved the core. Let's head back to Odori Park.
the prison keep is there, but it's the same ice barrier we encountered at Adori Park. We can't get through like this. But the core is just ahead, right? What do we do? How about up there? We may be able to drop in from above as long as we're willing to climb. Nice thinking, Inari. Then let's head over there. as we gallantly soar down these slopes to safety. This may just be the inspiration I need. Would you consider this inspiring? As I suspected, it seems we can enter from here. All right, let's do this thing! Central Mayor's insignia. Simple yet effective symbol of power. Let's go. 
Excellent. It seems the walls are no more. Then let's get our asses in there! Yeah. Let's not waste any more... How do you do, everyone? That voice! Mari-san? Are you working hard to keep Sapporo clean? To make it a glistening, filth-free city? Well, it's time for our regular cleanup. Anyone who calls themselves a proud member of my staff must take initiative! That means no slacking off, and not a single mote of dust left on the premises! I want this place spotless! Turn Sapporo into a paradise as pure as snow! Something's coming! Hide! believe my eyes They're changing about some cleanup routine maybe this is a periodic security measure at any rate it's too risky to charge in now let's head back to reality and see what we can do Somewhere today. Ugh, that mess was whack. A mess? It was Snowmageddon, I tell ya! Oh, the hee horror! Based on the timing of the announcement, I'm sure it was temporary. They were only a cleanup crew. Then let's call it a day. We'll use this opportunity to rest up and prep for tomorrow. say we hit the bath and... Oh, how many times must I repeat myself? Wait, is that... Mariko Hyoto? Did I not tell you? Our citizens suffer every time our personnel slacks off. Uh, forgive me. <coughs> what? You think I'll give you preferential treatment just because you're sick? Stand up straight and get back to doing your job. <laughs> Might I remind you that you'll be working through the night to make up for lost time? I'll do better. <laughs> Will that employee be alright? Not if he keeps working in that condition. How can anyone survive like that? Oh, it's you, children. Mari-san! How could you allow such a horrible thing? Horrible? Oh, no, no. Haru-chan, you misunderstand. I derive no pleasure in being so harsh. But it is a necessary measure to keep our city functioning. You see, we've been doing a campaign where our staff cleans up around the city for a month. Not only does it keep our staff in line, it enhances local safety as well. It's such an important job. Yet this incompetent bungler here still has the nerve to show up late. How can I take pride in such poor behavior? All he seems to be capable of is making excuses. A cleanup campaign, huh? Could this be... 
this be related to the He Horde? I won't say another time. Quit grovelling and get back to work. But he doesn't look well at all. The unfortunate thing is, Haru-chan, everyone working for Sapporo City Hall is a worthless piece of garbage. I didn't set them straight. Who knows what kind of mischief they cook up? They might betray me in far more crucial matters. Sounds to me like you're just making up bullshit to justify yourself. This man needs medical attention. He's in no condition to work. I'll help you. Come with me. Sorry to trouble you. What? Excuse me? What do you think you're doing? Just stop this, Mari-san! Haru-chan? The Mari-san I saw just now was nothing like the Mari-san I used to know. What happened to the Mari-san that treated everyone around her with kindness? You used to be surrounded by smiles. Everyone who met you was touched by your warmth and compassion. The way I remember you, Mari-san, you were like a sun that shined down on me. Why did you become like this? Why did you become so cold? I... I... Haru... I... I can't stop now. For her sake. Excuse me, but I'll be going now. Mari-san! Don't pursue her, Haru. She's the monarch of the jail. In other words, our target. The only way we'll change her heart is in the jail. <laughs> I know how you feel. But right now, we need to get this man to the hospital. You're right. of hospitals nearby. Let's move. Who does she think she is, treating a sick worker like dog shit? <sighs> Ryuji. Ah, <sighs> uh, my bad. Strange how she's so nice to us, but so unforgiving with her staff. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know what's making Mari-san act like this. She wasn't always like that. She used to be kind to everyone. What happened? You're right. There's no use dwelling on it right now. The reason will become clear as we progress. Until then, we move forward. Even though we had an unexpected obstacle, we managed to secure a route to the castle. Tomorrow, let's infiltrate that castle and head straight to Hyoto's cage. Good morning. Mari-san's castle. Its appearance is rather striking. The closer we get, the more vivid its detail. Detail aside, we can't get in again. Then let's search for another entrance. What's that? Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, shouldn't you be threatening us by now? I don't think they're here to mess around. Be ready for a challenge. Come! You're mine! Gotta exploit those weaknesses! Persona! Ravage them! Simply astonishing! Persona! Following up! Super Shot is a follow-up attack! Let's go! You're mine! It's a strong one! Exploit its weakness Take to this. curse!
Sounds like he's on glad we're on your side. just ahead. Let's not waste any time. So this is where the monarch of Sapporo resides. Is this all carved ice? It must be really cold. A frozen cage that denies all entry. Does this represent her distrust for all others? You are? You don't look so good. Are you all right? Mm-hmm. I should be. Then let us proceed as usual. Skull, it's up to you. I know why you're volunteering me, but here goes nothing. You did this! It's all your fault! How could you be so ignorant? Did you not think a snow sculpture could collapse? I... I apologize on behalf of our staff. Here it comes! Collapsing snow sculpture. This is where she... It must have been so heavy. It must have been so painful. Get me back, Kaho. Give me back my daughter. And my precious little girl. The accident resulted from my own personal oversight. Truly, I'm so sorry. Is the mayor the one apologizing? Shh! There's still more! <sighs> well, I didn't think the statue had fall on anybody. But isn't this the mayor's responsibility in the end? Well, besides, who can blame me? Well, we don't get paid nearly enough. Nothing wrong with taking a little kickback here and there? Those voices must be the root of Mariko Hiyota's trauma. So, that snow sculpture incident... Didn't we first hear about it at the park? We did, but I had no idea. Could Mari-san have really been involved? Is that the source of her trauma? Taking the blame for that incident? Don't forget the guy's voice. It sounded like he was trying to pass the blame on someone. At any rate, this is vital information. Let's go back to reality and confirm the truth. I dug up some articles about the snow sculpture incident. Let me fill you guys in. Two years ago, a large snow sculpture collapsed during the December Snow Festival sponsored by Sapporo Central City. Kaho Nanase-chan, a nine-year-old girl, was caught in the collapse and died. Despite Mir Hyodo's apology, the accident was ruled as an unforeseeable disaster. Therefore, she wasn't held liable. Oh, so that's what the flowers in the park were for. I wonder if the voice accusing Mari-san was the poor girl's mother. So this is Mari-san's trauma. That park where the snow festival was held is probably where the accident happened. Yeah. Let's use Emma and enter the keyword there. Hmm.
This is where the accident happened, isn't it? If we put in the keyword here, we should be able to access the trauma cell. There may be enemies ahead. You sure you guys are ready? That's right. I want to see what happened to Mari-san with my own two eyes. The keyword is Snow City. Keyword successfully entered. Beginning navigation. What is this? It looks like this is the snow festival. Check out those two suits over there. I didn't know you were accepting rebates. <laughs> I see a career man in the making. Sir? Would you please be discreet about this? I can do that. But in return, you need to do me a favor. I want her to take full responsibility for the incident. That way, she'll resign. Once that happens, I'll be the new mayor in town. And you'll be my well-paid associate. You will cooperate, won't you? Yes. Yes, of course. What did you just say? Ah! Oh, it seems I've been found out. It's not what it looks like, Mayor. This is really... Mayor? Does he mean Mayor Hyoto? Then... Mari-san saw this happen? I had no idea you were behind this. That anyone was behind this! Huh. You really don't get it, do you? Well, this festival is held by the city. Meaning it comes out of the taxpayer's pocket. I figured, why not lower costs and hire cheaper construction? But what's wrong with getting compensated for it? The rest of our staff makes these deals all the time. So what's the harm in one little mishap? That sculpture collapse was just bad luck. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I'm calling the police. Well, go ahead and do it. But I'm bringing you down with me. What? I'm gonna testify that I did it under your orders. Then you'll be ruined. Well, after all, you're the one in charge here. See, I even have the papers you signed. Right here. Such an unfortunate turn of events. Sorry to say, but you're finished, Mayor. You have counsel, aren't you? Don't you want to do the right thing? As far as I'm concerned, that's whatever's right for me. Well, are you finally ready to listen? Answer me, Mayor. Be ready. How can you blame a peon like me? We don't get paid enough for this. This best threatened the mayor. Is that it? I had no idea Marisa went through something like this. Something so awful. Think later, act now. We've got a real fight in our hands here. I told him to watch. I'll take the mayor down with me. He's up to something. Can anybody stop him? The defense of the nearby shadows is on the way up. Let's Tactical. go. Leland, Satanta, you're mine. What a stupid that badly. What a crazy woman you are. He's attacking with the shield, too! Watch out, everyone! Take this! Let's go! Look out! Keep it up! Let's go! Yours! Right here! 
Persona! Take this! Now! Let's go! Rabbit Gun! Strike! Go ahead. Sure. Let's go. You're mine. This one. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate Persona. it. Rabbit. Right Let's go. Your mind. Right there. Ready? Time. The stupid air of approval. Okay. This guy's atrocious. He's using all the blame on the bear. You hear this with Mars so much. Listening to thugs like you is a waste of our precious time. Bird Cage should be open once we need him. Everyone do your best. Muffin. Principality.
All of them. We can get into the throne room now. Who were those guys? They were arguing with the mayor just now. One was a city employee. The other must have been a councilman. Someone higher up on the ladder. Anyway, it seems this employee accepted an illegal donation from the contractor who ended up building the sculpture. Payment for landing them the job. In other words, bribery. We don't know if the sculpture collapsed due to a structural issue or a general lack of care. The result is still the same. Either way, the councilman was in the know. Not only that, he tried using a fatal accident to take Mayor Hyodo's position. <sighs> Something along those lines. Uh, unforgivable. Everything makes sense now. Hyodo overheard this conversation by chance and found out the truth about the accident. Not only was it someone from the city, but even her own staff had blackmailed her. That's messed up! These greedy assholes only wanted money and power. Now I have a better understanding of what Hyoda must be thinking. When she found out those around her were immoral, she became determined to purge the corruption above all else. That's why she's overworking her staff and trying to push her ethics bill through. And on top of it, she's trying to manipulate the people into re-electing her. Mari-san. Well, no matter what the reason, the birdcage is finally open. Let's head back to the hideout and discuss the specifics of the calling card.
So what do we do for the calling card? Maybe we shouldn't go overboard with it. I don't really see her as a bad person. Yeah, the real bad guy here is the one who took the bribe. No, the guy who offered the bribe in the first place is the true villain. Was it not the shoddy contractors who built the sculpture? And they deserve the most punishment. <sighs> you guys sound pretty heated. Who's to say one man's more evil than the next? So you were here all along? Yep. Sure has been a while. You guys forgot about me, didn't you? Why would you not get in contact with me? Well, uh, now that you mention it... Gramps, you completely slipped our minds. All right then. Maybe I'll forget to keep you from getting arrested. Okay, we're sorry. Ah, uh, forget it. So what's our situation? Now I get the picture. So that's how Mariko Hyoto became a monarch. Uh, that would explain your debate as to who was the worst of them all. What's your take on it, Gramps? My take is you kids are naive. What do you mean? It's clear that Mariko Hyoto was cornered by a pair of rotten scumbags. Tragic, I agree. But what is she doing in response? Isn't it just as wrong to change people's hearts and manipulate them? That may be true, but... Furthermore, that accident was her responsibility, being that she's the top of command. Regardless of who did what, a real leader takes the fall. But even so... It may be a bitter pill to swallow, especially for a group of justice-loving kids operating outside the law, but the real world isn't so cut and dry. And the longer you keep up this hero charade, the harder it'll bite you in the ass down the line. Kichi, that's terrible! Take it back! <sighs> ah, sorry. Might have overstepped my boundaries. No, I can understand your line of reasoning. You're saying that the world isn't neatly divided into good and evil. But that won't stop us from fighting. If we give up now, then the people who are counting on us won't have any hope left. We help people in a way no one else can. That's why the Phantom Thieves exist. I understand you all take this very seriously. Then tell me, either way the cards fall, you're not letting Hyoto get away with what she's doing, are you? Correct. We're going to stop her, Haru. What Mari-san is doing is forcing her warped intentions onto other people. And we can't let that happen, no matter what the reason. Right. We're the Phantom Thieves, and we fight for what we believe in. Yes, we're gonna stop Hyoto. But we'll do it in a way that's true to us. I have no objections. It's decided then. Thank you. So how will we send the calling card? Maybe we could send it over with some curry to the mayor's office? What are we, a catering service? <sighs> if anything, it should be ramen. Might be better to avoid closed spaces, actually. After all, she'll probably be outside prepping for the election most of the time. There's no point sending a calling card if the target doesn't see it. I wonder if we can send it somewhere on her campaign route. Like somewhere she's bound to pass by. Then how about where the Suzushino posters are? I'm sure she'll have a speech over there. Yeah, and if we time it with her speech, it'll be perfect. The question is, who's going to place it there? Ah, uh, no. Not again. Seriously? Thanks in advance, Gramps. Now hold on just a minute. Didn't I already pull this stunt for you in Sendai? Consider it a favor, then. Yeah, for being such a meanie earlier. Shouldn't you own up to it? There's no need to worry. We'll make the calling card for you. We'll be counting on you, Gramps. Oh, you little weasels. All right, fine, fine. I'll post the damn calling card. We really do appreciate it. How'd I let them twist my arm like this? Uh, whatever. If we're really doing this, it'll be early in the morning. Don't be late. Hey. Here's what I found. Yeah!
call you out so late. I wanted to talk to you about Mari-san. It's strange how I couldn't remember Mari-san until now. Even when Hasegawa-san said her name, it didn't quite occur to me who she was. But the moment she called me Haru-chan, suddenly, it felt like a lid popped open to my mind. My memories came pouring out. I remembered all these things about my childhood, about Mari-san. How could I forget someone I loved so much? I think what happened with my father affected me more than I realized. All the times we spent together, and the moment he passed away, I must have suppressed those memories deep within my heart. At some point, I got used to hiding things away, and I even forgot a good friend like Mari-san. No, I feel like... like I was running from it all over again. <sighs> a long time ago, I remember tagging along with Mari-san and my father during a golfing trip. I was so happy running around that I ended up tripping and falling. And of course I started crying. Then all of a sudden, Mari-san came up to me and said, Stop crying and get back up. And that shocked me at first because I always thought of her as an extremely gentle person. But because I knew she was so kind, I managed to stop crying and eventually got back up. I remember thinking Mari-san would never say anything out of place. I trusted her completely. At that point, Mari-san hugged me and said, No matter how many times you fall, you can always get back up and start again. Never forget that. <laughs> can you believe it? I didn't quite understand back then, but I think I do now. There's more to good character than kindness. Being good means dealing with the bad in front of you. It means to take a stand, even when all you want to do is run away. To realize nothing will change if you keep ignoring reality. <sighs> I have you and the Phantom Thieves to thank for that. It's too late to save my father. But it's not too late for Mari-san. This time, I can change things around. I want to tell her exactly what she told me all those years ago. Yes. Thanks for hearing me out. Tomorrow, I'm going to do my absolute best. But for now, good night. Hey. Why is Haru so upset over Mariko Hyodo? I don't have a heart, so it's hard to understand. Why do people try so hard for others? I wonder if I'll ever know. Really? I guess even real people have trouble empathizing from time to time. It may seem like a simple concept to you, but to me, it makes my mind go... <laughs> but I am humanity's companion. I am here to learn and grow. Desires who stole this very night? This is... You And they say they're going to steal my desires? What a bald-faced lie! Those desires are mine and mine alone! As long as I'm the monarch, I won't let anyone stop me! Very well. I was just beginning to work up an appetite. I wonder what you'll taste like. Perhaps I should gobble you up and find out. Why 
are standing there. Take these wretched things down. Wait for us, Mari-san. It'll all be over soon. I'll just add this. Her. I'm guessing this is Hyoda's distorted form. What do you people want? You had best, best not get in my way. Oh, I'm almost there. A few more votes and I'll win re-election. This is wrong, Mari-san. Those votes you gathered by twisting the people's hearts are worthless. And if you don't stop your tyranny, your staff will collapse one by one. I get why it's hard for you to trust people, but you still have to treat them with decency. Ha! Ah, you shut your impudent mouth! I've done nothing wrong! I will wring out every ounce of corruption from my staff by working them into the ground! I'll silence all charlatans who betray me! And I will consume every last vote in the city! Whether these people agree with me or not, only then can I build a safe haven, a radiant snow city that sparkles like winter. Listen to him! When you take away someone's desire, you rob them of their agency, the ability to make their own decisions. So what good does it do to turn your loyal citizens into mindless drones? Isn't it better to let them arrive at their own conclusions? To follow their own hearts? How dare you lecture me! Good job, Nuar. You tell her. Mari-san, say goodbye to the countless desires you stole. Because Beauty Thief and the Phantom Thieves are about to take them back. Honestly, <clears throat> they're all in my way. Ah. This is the last straw. Ah. 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 You've made me so very hungry. It's time, and the main course is through. Taking those desires back! Shut your prissy little mouth! What would you know? I will consume all who oppose me, no matter who they are! You either eat or be eaten! Whoa, what's with all the food? I got it! Now's not the time to stuff your face! Here she comes! Cut it! Get me busy! Get your chance! Start wailing on! Part of me! Oh. 
short. Take this! Oh, that was a crazy idea! That was We're great, Joker! Persona! What? <laughs> Let's go! Uh, that one looks tough! Oh, 
who tried to set you up, even the girl who died in the accident. <gasps> Each of these things grieved you, and in order to make a city where none of it could reoccur, you took action as you saw fit. Am I right? As the mayor, I know very well that little girl's death was ultimately my fault. But my staff betrayed me! All for their insatiable greed! I thought I could leave that awful position behind. Unfortunately, it wasn't as simple as that. Had I gone, I'd only be replaced by greedy scum! That's why I never stepped down. In this world, it's either eat or be eaten. And with circumstances so cruel, I decided I'd be the one doing the eating. Even if every last one of my votes were false, at least I could use them to make the world a better place. But if I was replaced as mayor, who would be there to honor that little girl's memory? 
innocent girl lost her life, yet I could do nothing to stop the evil still afoot. It's not too late to set this right. First, you must tell the people everything that happened. Then can you get a fresh start. But this time, on your own strength. That would be... impossible. I cooperated with those awful men to hide the truth. That way I could continue being mayor. There's nothing I can do. <sighs> Stand up, Mariko Hyodo! <sighs> Are you just going to stay knocked down? You are a kind and strong woman, not someone who collapses over mistakes. So stand up and hold your head up high, because no matter how many times you fall, you can always get back up and start again. Isn't that... Yes. You said that to me a long time ago. Even if you told the people the truth about the incident, there are those who would still see the good in you. Don't let your position ruin you. Think back to what you stood for. She's right, Mayor. You can't give up. If you tell everyone your side of things, they'll listen. When my father died, I felt like my heart was going to break. But thanks to the Phantom Thieves, I was able to stand strong and move forward. That's why I know you can too. Remember the part of you that taught me to get back up, no matter how many times I fall. Yes. You're right. Thank you, Haruchan. What, what I've done was wrong. I drove my employees to the brink, and used a strange power to manipulate the votes. I was so driven by my personal agenda, I lost sight of how I originally felt. And why I ran for mayor in the first place. To make a city beloved by everyone. To give back to the home where I was raised. That's reason enough to take another step. I won't make this mistake again. I never needed this power from the start! Haruchan, you've grown so much. Your father must be so happy in heaven. Mari-san. Happy? That took us quite a while. Haru, you were fantastic. It was only because you were all with me. But I do wonder if Mari-san will be okay. I'd say so. Her shadow disappeared like they always do. Yeah, your feelings definitely reached her. I'm sure her heart has changed for the better. Well, I guess this wraps up the mission. We still need to confirm that the citizens are all back to normal. It'd be nice if we could do that right away. Can we grab something to eat first? I'm hungry enough to pass out here. He has a point. Battles can't be fought on an empty stomach. The battle's already over, but still. Hey, can we try Genghis Khan? That delicious lamb barbecue dish? Ooh, that's a must in Hokkaido. What? I thought we were finally getting lobster hot pot. Since when did we decide that? Why would we when it's so damn hot out? But if you think about it, isn't Genghis Khan also sort of like Hot Pot? No way! Isn't it supposed to be barbecue? Well, cooking Genghis Khan does require a utensil called a Genghis Khan pot. And you can't barbecue in a pot. True. Though sukiyaki is served Hot Pot style, its etymology does refer to grilling. I wonder why. Does it even matter? <laughs> hey, was that a smile just now? Yeah, straight from Sapporo, it's Beauty Thieves award-winning smile. I'm relieved too. I thought you might be weighed down by all that's happened. Indeed, she was so weighed down that she met up with our leader for a private midnight chat. Huh? Were you watching? So 
Sophia. Find us the best Genghis Khan in Sephora. Hmm. Sophia? Uh, sorry. Okay, I've got it. seems pretty normal to me. Their fanatical support for Mariko Hyodo appears to have died down. I'm glad they're back to their senses. What a drastic change. Just goes to show how powerful a monarch's influence can be. Hey, guess what? Hyodo-san's holding a press conference right now. Thank you all for taking your time to gather here today. Actually, there's something I've been meaning to share with everyone. As of today, I will be resigning from office. I do not intend to seek re-election either. During my time as mayor, I've betrayed all of your trust. You may think of me as a mayor who's earned your trust, but in truth, there's plenty that I'm ashamed of. The snow sculpture that collapsed was built by an unscrupulous company that bribed one of my staff. In spite of my responsibility, I neglected to see the finer details and went ahead with the construction. As a result, the sculpture ended up collapsing and a girl's precious life was lost. Furthermore, I elected to cover up the truth all so I could save my position. I've been garnering votes I didn't deserve in order to stay on as mayor. I betrayed everyone to protect myself and covered it up by allowing more wrongdoing. I am among the guilty. That little girl, she died because of me. <sighs> as such, I will have the police reinvestigate the case and offer my full assistance, and again, I will drop out of the election and forfeit my position as me. Seems that Hyoro-san's made up her mind. I wonder if she'll be arrested. Good question. Yoda was afraid that if she wasn't the mayor, she couldn't protect her people. She could have told the truth and made her underling take the blame. But she was concerned about other evils potentially lurking in the shadows. I think this turned out for the best. Mari-san wouldn't have wanted to hide her mistake forever. Zenkichi is on the line. Hey, you guys see Yoda's press conference? Yep. You all did a bang-up job. Really, can't thank you enough. They plan on bringing Kyoto in as a key witness regarding the accident. I knew you'd want to analyze her phone, too. So I pulled a few strings, and now I'm her personal chauffeur. At least as far as the station. If you want, I can open up some time for you to talk to her. Just tell me where you want to meet. Oh, I'm sorry. How could you ever forgive me, Kaho-chan? Mari-san. Haru-chan. Listen, there was something wrong with me. It's like I was in a terrible dream. I don't know when it was that my heart grew so cold. But after what you told me, I remembered who I really was inside when I became maid. I wanted to protect the city and everyone in it as if they were my own family. I remembered that feeling. Thanks to you, I've finally been able to confront myself. And I realized that I was doing a horrible disservice to that girl. I had lost sight of reality and begun acting self-righteous. Nothing I did was for her sake. But Mari-san, you were doing the best you could. No, it's the truth. Had I not realized my mistake, I would have likely continued to hurt even more people. But that's not what Kaho-chan would want. 
So let me say thank you, Harusha. Thank you for saving this city, for saving my family. Harisan! Your father's recent passing must have caused you so much turmoil. I'm sorry I added to it. But if there's anything I can do for you in the future, any way I can be there, just ask me. I say this because you're a precious part of my family, too. Thank you so much, Marisan. Oh, Haru-chan! I'm happy for you, Haru. Mm. I suppose I must get going. Though I am concerned about the state of affairs I've left our city in, I'll leave it up to my successor. An arrogant wretch like me has no place being the mayor. Does that mean you won't be involved in politics anymore? Yes. I'm too ashamed to show my face in public. And at my age, there are plenty of younger folks who can... Mayor. Your... I saw the news. So you are resigning. And you're leaving politics for good? That's right. I've promised to step down and never... You can't be serious! Resigning won't bring her back. In fact, it won't change a thing. Carl. Nothing can change what happened to my daughter. Hey, uh, shouldn't we get in there? Hold that thought a moment. So you can't. You can't just run away. Start over and become our mayor again. What? When I was weeping with rage and grief, you stood there and cried with me. Instead of running away, you were there when I needed someone the most. I know your character more than anyone. Ma'am, thank you for sharing your heart with me. Then, I promise to both you and your daughter, I will stand back up and become your mayor again. Marisa. Hmm. I don't get it. I know this is a sad moment. Everyone is crying, but it also feels warm and kind. How would you describe this? I see. So that's why Haru helped Yodo to transform sadness into happiness, recording valuable data. Sophia has learned happiness. That must have been the mom of the girl who passed away. No, well, it seems like she really understood Yodo's intentions. I'm so happy for you, Marisan. She reminded me of what Haru said in jail. That was a tender moment. There's no need to reenact it. Yeah, but you played it so cool back there. Oh, it really touched my heart. Could you please forget it already? Indeed, <laughs> truly moved. You did good. Uh, that's... <laughs> it really was touching. <laughs> Just add this. Amazing! <laughs>
Oh, yeah. So I went to talk to Hyodo, but nothing new came out of it. All she explained is that she could control whoever added her as a friend on Emma. Come on, don't give me that look. Here, I at least got her smartphone. Now that's what I want to see. After reviewing the facts, I've just about confirmed it. Each of these so-called incidents, I think they all stemmed from a mastermind. Oh? I'm curious as to why you think so. Yodo, Natsume, Alice... All three were changing people's hearts to do bad things. But deep down, none of them were truly evil. At the very least, they're not the same as the rulers who distorted reality for their own sakes and ended up spawning palaces. I'd been considering that as well. Before Natsume lost sight of his writing, he was diligently working toward his dreams. Alice, too. She was doing her very best to be a ray of light and hope for other people. Mari-san was also striving for the betterment of everyone in Sapporo. Right. They're different from criminal scum like Kamoshida and Matarame, who acted only for their own benefit. Okay, but how does a handful of not-so-evil monarchs prove there's a mastermind behind all this? The fact that jails are fundamentally different from palaces provides us a big clue. For starters, jails don't have any treasures for the taking. All we found are people's stolen desires. That means monarchs don't have twisted enough wills to reshape reality and form treasures. Which would mean that jails aren't created by the monarchs themselves. Someone else must be doing the creating. Our final clue is the locks on all those bird cages. In order to get to the monarch, we've always had to unlock a door that denies us passage. I had thought this was just a security measure designed to protect the monarch and the desires held within. But if that were the case, why would traumatic memories the monarch would rather erase be the key to unlocking it? Given that these are cognitive worlds, maybe it means monarchs think their trauma will protect them. I find that rather odd. If anything, I would think it's the other way around. Correct. What if it is the other way around? Why might a door like that exist? Right. I think so, too. What if that door isn't to keep intruders out, but to trap monarchs in? You mean they're trapped? I thought the monarchs are the ones in charge. Think about it. What would happen if a monarch tried leaving their cage? They'd touch the door, and then hear the voices of their trauma? Exactly. They'll remember what made them so warped in the first place, and stick to their guns as a monarch. And thus, the cycle continues unbroken. The monarchs really are birds in a cage. From that perspective, the shadows protecting the keys inside the trauma cell hold a far more sinister purpose. They aren't there to prevent the monarch's trauma from being discovered. They're wardens guarding an elaborate system to ensure the monarch's imprisonment. Let me get this straight. You're basically saying these monarchs are being manipulated. And by virtue of that, there's somebody doing the manipulating. How's Hyodo-san's smartphone looking? Nothing wrong with her phone or the Emma installed. But I did find traces of surveillance. Huh. I'll bet it's the same snooper we keep running into. Though I'm lost as to who it might be. So this observer and our mastermind may just be one and the same. Hmm. Anyone have any guesses? Our first suspect is Medis, the company in charge of Emma. Since you can't get into jails without Emma, I can't write it off as mere coincidence. Medis, huh? Uh, too bad we can't just storm their headquarters. You mean the cops can't actually do that? Of course not. How could we even put out a warrant on them? By saying they go around turning people into monarchs? You have a call from Ichinose. Hi there! Sorry for the relative lapse in communication, but I did turn up some info that I thought you guys might like to know. 
So, I've been looking into Emma all this time, and I still have yet to find any differences between her past and present versions. I mean, this is state-of-the-art tech, not something just anybody could pry open and take a look inside. But then I took a peek at Emma's changelog, and that's where things got interesting. It seems Emma was transported to Okinawa at some point after I sold her to Medis. Ichinose sensei. Okinawa? Crystal clear waters? Shisa statues? Juicy pineapples? Shinsuko cookies? Oh, that too! It's that ramen like thing, yeah? Guys, can you snap out of it? If it's an unregistered facility. We could always say we're conducting a field survey. That way we could ensure their cooperation. We may even find proper evidence that could be used in court. It may be well worth going, but Kukujima is a bit far from the Okinawa mainland. Then I guess we'd have to go by plane. Wait, what about our precious Feathermobile? We've taken it all this way. That's what you're naming this thing? Plus, you said it'd be dangerous using public transportation. Even so, wouldn't it be too complicated to try to reach Okinawa by car? Oh, give me a second. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Yeah, of course I'm aware, but I also have a job to do, you know? <laughs> Who's he talking to? Why would I lie? I'm being honest, I swear. Uh, of course I remember. The thing is, I'm a little... Well, oh. You got hung up on. Uh, okay, guys. Plane to no go. We're driving. Huh? You mean we're going all the way to Okinawa by car? <laughs> the thing is, I need to make a stop along the way. So we'll be heading to Kyoto first. Did you say Kyoto? Yeah, I primarily work for the Kyoto Police Department. I thought I'd take a moment to catch up, share intel, you know, cop stuff. After that, we head to Kobe. We can take a direct ferry to Okinawa from there. That ought to cut down on time. But that's still quite a distance, even to Kyoto. Not to worry, I'll do the driving. You're tagging along? Wait, am I to believe that Nijima's been doing all the driving? Okumura, I thought you already had your license. I do have it. It's just, I don't have much experience behind the wheel. Plus, Haru's driving is not exactly... Uh... <laughs> well, in any case, we're taking off immediately. If we're leaving from here, you'll need to take the Hokuriku Expressway. The estimated travel time will be... About 21 hours, give or take. Gramps is correct. 21 hours? Are you nuts? You forget I'm an officer of the law? We're badass at driving. What's with him all of a sudden? It's like he lit a fire under his ass. Fine by me. So long as I can visit Kyoto at last. There goes Inari, revealing his true colors. All right then, let's hit the road. I'll get you rascals there in record time. Mm-hmm. Never see it come down. 